of us, if the rest of us can stand, we're going to pray. If you can remain standing, we're going to read from God's word together. <laughs> Let's do it. God's awesome. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're going to approach the one who's awesome. Father God, you're an awesome God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here this morning. We are honored, Lord. We are honored to be here. We are honored in every way. Lord, we're honored. For, Lord, I love hearing that baby cry. I love, Lord, love, I love life. I love you. And so right now, Lord, we praise you, Lord, that you are here. And Lord, as we get into your word right now, we ask that you would speak to us. Lord, that we would get your message for each of us today. May your, your word is living and active. So Lord, help us, let it be living and active uh, to ourselves personally today. Speak to us, each of us. And then help us to do whatever it is you want us to do. We thank you, God, for your truth. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can re be remaining standing, remain standing. We're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. That evening, the disciples came to him, Jesus, and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning's message is called Water Walking Training. <laughs> we're going to learn about how to water walk today. Well, that's going to be interesting. We're journeying right now, of course. Uh, we're in a series going, going through the book of Matthew and our series is called Just Jesus because our focus is on Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's why we're going through Matthew. Our, we're just about Jesus here. Last week, we, we took a moment. when uh, we, we looked at a time when Jesus was experiencing uh, personal loss as a result of a tr uh, the tragic execution of John the Baptist, his cousin and close relative. And how the, G how the Lord sought personal comfort through spending time alone with his father. We learned an important principle that when life presses hard, press hard into God. And we also discovered that Jesus, by his pressing hard in the Lord, his Father, he was then able to effectively minister to other people, even while he was still experiencing personal pain from his loss. One of the ways that Jesus was able to serve the people even in the midst of his personal pain, was by miraculously feeding 5,000 men plus women and children. We alluded to it last week. Now we're going to study a little bit more this week. Jesus was able to do that because of his time with his father. So now we're going to look at that episode a little bit more. And then we're also going to look at the next a very familiar episode. And that's when Jesus came walking on the water. And then he also enabled Peter to do the same thing. So we're going to look at both of those very well-known and familiar episodes. And our purpose here is to discover how we can successfully pass God's tests. That's what we're focusing on today. So we're going to look at what it means to actually, well, what it means when God tests us. What does that even look like? And why is it even important? And we're going to look at how Matthew, his account here, discovers how he can give us, well, God, through him, gives us key steps how, that we can know how to pass God's tests and help us overcome our own failures uh, when we mess up. Does that sound good? That eh, kind of? Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, we're going to do it today. All right. My mom frequently likes to tell the story. <laughs> it's about little Lonnie. So you're going to learn about, learn about Lonnie when he was like four or five years old right now. When I was taking swimming lessons. Way back then, way back yonder time. 
I, I, it was actually the very first day of swimming lessons. I remember it because we were in the, well, all us little kids, we were in the shallow in the pool, we're standing in the water, and I, in the, our instructor, you know, our coach, swimming guide, teacher, he was saying things, I don't remember what he was saying, but then he said, you know, preliminary stuff, and then he said, okay, now go ahead and let's all get our faces wet. So, of course, they signal, then you go, everyone to dunk themselves under the water. Well, I took that literally, and so what I thought I was supposed to do, and what I, in fact, did do, was put my hand on top of the surface of the water, start patting it, and go like this, so, you know, get my face wet. <laughs> Sounded reasonable to me. And, 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 you know, every time I, sh- I share that story, my mom shared the story, I said, like, you know, I don't see what's wrong with that. I still would do that today. It just makes sense to me. I don't know. But... Yeah, the whole idea, of course, is that was, well, maybe I didn't pass that test, but yeah, it's not a good sign for asking me how I do my swimming even today, but that's all right. You know, it's cool that God also, interestingly enough, gives us tests. And you say, that's cool? Actually, it, it is. When we understand what he's doing and why he does it and what his purpose is. The Bible talks about, for example, how God tested Abraham when he asked him to sacrifice his own son as a sacrifice to God, which God normally doesn't do. He would never do that. But God did that with Abraham. He said, I want you to sacrifice your son. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Test time. In fact, read with me Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 and 18. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when, look at this, when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Of course, we know he trusted God, and God did hinder him and offered up a ram to be sacrificed in his son's place. And so, uh, the point is, God did in fact test Abraham, but Abraham passed the test. And the key was, and it's very clear, when it talks about, in the whole context of Hebrews 11, and it brings it up again in Romans chapter 4, the purpose was God was testing him, but Abraham passed the test with a one key characteristic. The key to passing God's test is by test, passing the test of faith. It's a test of faith. Faith is the key ingredient to passing God's test. We can say it this way. I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. Now, let's say that together on the count of three. One, two, three. I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. Now, that's important. And every statement in there obviously is important. And the concept of our faith resting on it means it's staying there. It doesn't just, it's there and then leaves. No, it has to rest there. It has to stay there. It has to remain there. But, but if my faith does rest there, does stay there, I'm going to pass God's test. That's key, because we're, we're going to look at the two accounts we mentioned today. Both of them, we'll see, are actually tests. Jesus is testing in different ways. We'll, we'll take a look at it, and we'll see how they passed the test or didn't, and how we can. Now, we mentioned a little bit, you know, you know a little earlier, of course. This is Matthew chapter 14, and we're looking at v- verses 15 to 36 ish or so. We talked about, like last week, how Jesus had, was hurting because he just heard about his cousin being executed and he's, um, you know, emotionally distraught, wants to get along with his father, uh, wasn't, able, wasn't able to initially, but of, he saw all these people, they followed him, but out of his compassion, he still was able to heal everyone. And then, though, at dinner time, he said, hey, okay, it's time to feed everybody. Now, it says the 5,000 men plus women and children. Interesting that they all said that. Matthew said that. We read it. John says the same thing. We're going to look at John's account in a moment here. And they said the same thing. So, most authorities say there must have been at least 20,000 people. They didn't have birth control back then. Mr. Will. <laughs> and you're going to speak here at the, right after my end my message. Thank you, Mr. Will. A test. (laughs) Read with me John chapter 6, verses 5 to 10. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, 
where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Look at this. He was testing Philip. He already, already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here and with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Now, notice how leading into this, this miracle of choosing to feed this massive crowd, John mentions that Jesus was testing Philip because Philip, well, he got, Jesus knew what he was going to do. He wanted to see if Philip would get it. He wanted to actually, what's he trying to do? Is he trying to make Philip, is he trying to trip Philip up? Is he trying to make him fail? Is he, is he going to try to say, hey, you know, I want your faith to fail? Of course not. He's doing just the opposite, isn't he? He's getting to think, well, I can't, this can't be done. Well, not on yourself, by yourself. But you're not by yourself anymore here, are you? He's trying to help him by testing him to actually increase his faith. Because when our faith gets stronger, we get stronger, folks. When our faith gets stronger, we get stronger. So that's what he was doing. So obviously the test here is a positive thing. He was encouraging him. And that's, that's the message for all of us. When our faith gets stronger, we get stronger. And how do I... So that's why Christ tests us. And we pass those tests. Why? I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. Here's the key. And so that's what we're going to do right now. That's what he, Jesus is doing with Philip. And that's what he does for the rest of us. Now, interestingly enough, right after the situation, of course, uh, Jesus did have them... Uh, of course, just watch him. He, all he had to do them do was sit down on the grass. That, most people, all they do is sit down in groups. The disciples helped pass out the food, but Jesus did the work after the prayer. And they just watched. The test was passed simply by just obeying and sitting on the grass. But then there was another account right after this, on the heel of this. Right after this moment, the Bible says that Jesus sent his disciples on a boat. So now they're in the boat trying to get to the other side. And then he said, I'm going to send out the people because they've, fed, they've, been, you know, they've been able to eat now. So, so he sent them away, you know, blessed them. And then he went alone, the Bible says, to be praying with his father in hills. We read that top, that passage last week. What we didn't read, we stopped there. What we didn't read after that, though, was he spent up praying most all night. In fact, the New Living Translation says it, runs, it was around 3 a.m. that Jesus decided, okay, to join his buddies on the boat. But he walked on the water. So they were a long ways off, and they were, a storm had developed, and they were struggling with their oars because of the storm. They were getting a little afraid. So here it is. The, actually, the actual account says it was the fourth watch of the night, which is the last watch right before uh, daybreak, between 3 to 6 a.m. So Jesus is walking on the water. The disciples see him. It's dark, it's storming, they're struggling, and they're freaking. <laughs> they see him walk, they think he's a ghost. Ah, it's a ghost! Well, you, they're already afraid, so it probably didn't take much, but I, I, understandable why they might think something like that. I mean, it's not, oh, not every day that we get a chance to see somebody walking on water. I haven't seen it lately, have you? Okay, so we can't really you know, fault them too much for being afraid of that. But Christ reassured him, said, don't be afraid, it's me. And as soon as, interestingly enough, as soon as he said that, and they were, you know, all oh, they could see it was Jesus, Peter does his impulsive thing. And he blurts out a statement. He says, hey, Jesus, if you command me, I can walk on the water to you. Now, of course, he says that before he really he thought about what he was saying, but he said that. Amen. Now, here's the thing. He did a phenomenal job. He, he described when he made that statement in his impulsivity, actual principles of faith. He knew some very key principles which we're going to be looking at. For one, he understood, one, I can't do this, but two, you can. Obviously, Jesus can. They're watching him do it right now. Right? And that he had the authority. Christ had authority. 
They'd already seen that he had already calmed the wind and the waves before. Now he's walking on the water. So he got it. Well, I, while I can't do it, you can. And so since you have the authority to do that, <coughs> if you command me, I will be able to do it too. Wow! That's called faith! And then if you know the story, of course, he stepped out of the boat and he went for it. But here's what's really neat about this is, this is another test. See, the test, Peter brought on this test himself. Jesus, he said to Jesus, hey Jesus, if you have command me, I can go to walk on the water. Peter's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you ready for this one, Pete? <laughs> cool. A faith walk. Let's go for it, buddy. Let's see how you do. So, Jesus is testing him, but G Peter brought it on himself. Amen? He did. And you know what? Initially, initially, he was passing the test, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, he did. He actually got out of the boat. And he was, as the Bible says, we'll see, he was actually walking on the water to Jesus. Wow, that's just incredible. In fact, take a look at that with me. Matthew 14, 29b. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Now, of course, that, look at that phrase. He walked on the water toward Jesus. He was actually walking on the water. At least for a little bit. Awesome. So he, at that moment, he had the faith. He knew that he couldn't do it. He knew Jesus could. He knew if I, if I step out, if Jesus enabled me, if he commanded this to happen, I will be able to do this. I mean, he's showing real faith there and he's passing the test. He did good. He put faith in the ultimate authority. Followed the command and he went. But we know the story further, don't we? We know his, his faith was only so much. Because then he got, took his eyes off the one who was the authority. God looked on the wind, wind of the waves. Remember, he's in a storm here. And that's when he started sinking. Ah, I can't do this. Ah, what did he do? What was he doing? He said, ah. I can't do this. Who did he take his faith off of? And who did he put his faith on when he started realizing, ah, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. Faith went from Jesus to self. Now, here's the deal. Of course he can't do that. Right? He already knew he couldn't do that. But he already, from the beginning, he, when we said, Lord, command me to come. By the way, that's the word, it says in the New and Living Tale, but it's the word, it means the command or order. Command me to come, and I'll be able to, because it's based on you, your authority, not mine. Right? And so he did it right for a little bit. This faith was on Jesus, it just didn't rest there. <laughs> Are you with me? As soon as he took his faith off of Jesus, put it on himself, he got that sinking feeling. <laughs> I like that one. I don't know. <laughs> All right. But the key was when he had his faith resting on Jesus, he was passing the test, wasn't he? I pass my test when my faith rests on Jesus. So why is this all a big deal? I mean, why does it mean so much to focus on passing God's test to, and by placing our faith in Christ? Why is it such a big deal? Now, folks, if you want to rely on you all your life, if you want to stay in the boat, then you keep on doing what you're doing and not thinking you need to pass God's test of faith. But if you want to dare to get out and fit a water walk, you need to have the faith in the right source. You need to rest on Jesus. Amen? So, I'm going to give you two quickie, real quick reasons why. One, why do I think it's important to take the steps of faith to pass God's test? One, because I don't want to sin. And I do want to please God. I don't want to sin. And I do want to please God. At Romans chapter 14, verse 23, uh, I like how God's word translation says it this way. It says, anything that's not done in faith is sin. Anytime I'm not exercising faith, I'm sinning. Every single time. No matter what it is, no matter how it is. Every time I'm not having faith, I'm sinning. 
no matter what it is. And that's pretty deep to me. So, stay in the boat, because I'm not going to have the faith. What am I doing? Just, thought, just a thought there. Second, second question. So, I don't want to sin, so I need to exercise faith. And also, whenever I am, uh, well, whenever, also another reason why is whenever I'm not exercising faith, whenever I'm not exercising faith, also I'm not pleasing God. Obviously, he doesn't like sin. But look at this verse with me. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. First part of it says this. Look at this phrase. And it is impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible. That's deep to me. That's deep to me. It's impossible to please God without faith. I mean, that's, that's deep. So, do I want to please God? Yes. Do I want to sin? No. What's the key? Faith. I guess I better work on this thing. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's, let's, let's go, we're going to go on our water walking tour here a little bit, okay? This training. How are we going to do water walking training? How do we do this? Well, oh, oh by the way, which, okay, I'll take a look. One more thing. Paul made his goal to please God too. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 9. So Paul said about his, him and his disciples, so we make it our goal to please him. That should be our goal. So how do we do this? How do I, how do I successfully take steps of faith here? How do I water walk by faith? I'm going to give you four reasons, four ways. One, choose to believe in the one true authority, just like Peter did. Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. Then Peter called to him, to the Lord, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. Great, go for it, Pete. Let's do it. Water walking training time. Let's go for it. Reminds me a lot like a spiritual example of a parent trying to teach their child how to walk regularly, right? Come, come here, come here. And, and they take a step. Yeah, you don't get upset with them. You get excited when they took a step. Then you, and you keep moving forward. That's spiritual water walking. That's what this is. It's physically water walking, but it's a spiritual test of faith. That's what's going on here. And every time we put our True source of our faith in the Lord, the right authority, which is Jesus, when it rests there, and we believe he commands us, that he, if, he says, if he says to go do it, then we can. Every time God says something in his word, every principle, we hold on to it. Every time. Every time. Steps of faith. We read some of the word. I can't do that. Oh, you just eliminated. It. You just became Pete. And you just had that sinking feeling. Amen? Amen. Right? Oh, but God can't. So what am I going to do with that? Oh, man, this is scary. Yeah, it is. Getting out of the boat? That's scary, man. Amen? Yes. It is. It's scary. If we do it right, sometimes it's not so scary. I mean, depending on what it is, but sometimes it could be really scary. And that's the next point. What do I need to do? Water walk first. I need, to, I need to rest, and that's the key, rest my faith in the right source, God. Really believe it. Not just think it mentally, but get it in my heart and follow through. And that goes to this point number two. Step out of the boat. Step out of the boat. Matthew 14, 29. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water. Now, that might seem obvious here, right? Because we can't water walk if we don't take that step of faith and get out of the boat. But the problem is, if we aren't water walking, if we're too afraid to obey, step out of the boat, we're not operating in faith, right? And we're not, when we're not operating in faith, we can't please them either. Oh, my goodness. See, there were 12 people, 12 men in that boat, weren't there? Yeah. But only one took that yes. step of faith. Amen? And I don't want to judge the other 11. It could be they just didn't think of what Peter was saying. So, okay. Maybe they would have even done a better job. I don't know. Or maybe they didn't think of it because they didn't want to even try to do it in the first place because their authority was, they were still resting on themselves. I know I can't do that. So, end of subject. See, that's where we blow it. That's, right. that's where we blow it. We blow it. We start, we keep looking at ourselves. I know I can't do it. Oh, there we go again. God gave you a command about not doing that one thing, right? Whatever that one thing is. You'll, but I can't help. Oh, now it's back on you again. 
Ooh. Who are we looking on? Depend- Where is our faith resting there? That's right. I passed the test when my faith rests on who? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, not myself. And, th- and enduring to the end, keep, keeping our faith and resting on him through the whole test. That's the key to success. Peter didn't. Of course, that goes on the next point. What do I need to do to pass the test? I need to focus on the true source of power while walking. You see, that's the key here about resting on the right source, that is Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. He, Peter did great when his eyes were on Jesus. The moment he took him off, he started having that sinking feeling. Faith in Jesus enables us to walk on the water. It does. And we have to keep the faith there. We got to keep the eyes off the storm. Got to keep our eyes off the distractions. Got to keep our eyes off of the temptations. Got to keep our eyes off the things. All the people calling us to do this, do that. Oh, my saying, do this. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. That is Peter sinking feeling stuff there. The key is to keep your eyes on the source who actually can enable you to do the water walking. Right? That's right. We can't do it on our own. But we can with him. I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. When it rests there, I pass that test. Another important principle for, principle for water walking by faith is when we start to fall, cry out to the right source, Jesus. Matthew 14, 30 and 31. Because when Peter started sinking, Save me, Lord! He shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. He, Jesus is not going to let you drown. That was Peter's fear. That's why he started sinking. I'm on my own again. Thankfully, he realized, well, I'm on my own. I can't do it, but you still can. Help! And he grabbed him. See, when we're going through the storms, we feel when we're feeling like we're alone, and every time when we feel like we're doing this alone, but yet you're only walking on the water because you have your eyes on the right source. And no, you're not you're not walking on the water because you're still in the boat. Oh my goodness. I feel so safe in the boat. Oh, so secure in the boat. Does it? The world doesn't look so secure to me. We're looking for other things in that boat. We're looking to, to, to government. Oh, go. You're looking to government for help? Woohoo! We're looking to our family and our friends. They do what they can. We do what we can. Right? They're not God, and we're not God. Oh, the Lord says, I love you, now get out of the boat. Oh, my goodness. I love you, get out of the boat. Keep your eye on me, and you'll pass the test. Keep, my eye, eye, keep your eyes on me. Trust in me. You'll pass the test if your faith rests on me, Jesus says. That's the key. Sometimes things can look so bad that we can just want to run and hide, can't, don't we? David felt that way. Psalms 55, verses 5 to 7. He wrote, Fear and trembling overwhelm me. I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and rest. Look, and he's, looking so, he's looking to his running away to be his rest. I would fly far away to, to the quiet of the wilderness. Have you ever felt like David here, where things were so bad. You feel like your experiences around you were so hard. You just wanted to run. I've been there. Times and moments, that danger, it makes you want to run. But what David also then affirmed, and what Jesus affirmed to Peter is, the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. He'll hold you up. He told us in the the Great Commission itself, and lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. The whole point is, he said, you might feel like it. Don't believe your feelings. Believe me. Don't, you, you you, You don't trust, you don't see it happening. Don't trust your eyes. Trust me. 
You don't see where it's going to come from. Don't trust your thinking. Trust me. Make your faith rest in me and you'll pass the test. Right? Oh, it's so hard. What's that, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. He'll direct your path. Lastly, what do I do to, face, to successfully water walk? He's going to bring you through the test. If you have your faith resting on him, you're going to pass. You will. But if you don't, if you mess up, okay, Lord, save me. Okay, get out. Don't just stay in the water. Say, Lord, save me. Don't get in the boat and stay there. Oh, I tried that once. I started, I got that sinking feeling. I'm not going to be doing that again. How about your kid? You're just like, oh, I tried once. I took one or two steps. I didn't like falling. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to walk again. Right? No, 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 no. Get back up there and walk again. Right? Okay, what happens when you finally make it all the way and you get into the boat after the passing of the test? Last one. Give all praise where the praise is due. Jesus. This is a passage where you might not even know what happened. This is after Jesus and Peter got back in the boat. The wind and the waves died down. And look what happened. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Wow! Give all the worship to the worship to the one it's due. Don't neglect. Don't say, okay, oh Lord, thank you, Lord. Whew. Now the next thing. Oh, you worship him. Look what he did for you. He helped you pass that test. You didn't think there was any way you could have done that. You know what? On your own, you're right. You couldn't. You would have that sinking feeling. But you trusted him and he brought you through it. So praise him and worship him. Dwell there and thank him. Well, well, God, my God might, well, God might try to test us. It's always to help us grow. The key to passing those tests is faith. I pass the test when my faith rests on Jesus. Or I started my message talking about a, my first day in swimming lessons. I'm going to tell you about what happened a little bit later. This happened, it was a series of events. It was still early on in my, in my swimming training experience. And I still did not know how to swim. But the, our instructor, our coach said, Okay, who of you would like to get a jump off the high dive? You don't, know how to, you, don't worry, you don't know how to swim. Don't worry, because we didn't know how to swim. He said, because we got this really long, like, you know, thing here. Has a hook at the end, and, 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 and you will we'll grab you. So who would like to do that? High dive 12 feet up before the water, and then there is 12 feet down below the water. Just so you get an idea here. For us four and five year olds who didn't know how to swim. Well, there was a few of us actually took the test. I was one of them. I let the others go first. <laughs> <laughs> and they would jump off and go. There was a couple that really quickly who did not know how to swim quickly learned how to paddle, how to doggy paddle because they did not want to go all the way down. <laughs> it's like, wow, you can do that? Anyway, so I didn't do that. I did go off, and it jumped whew, down. And I remember I was down there, 12 feet underwater, looking up, <laughs> waiting for that stick, the hook. <laughs> I could see them, but it was kind of blurry. And I saw, oh, there it came down. Okay, fine. Pull me right back up. No, no problem. <laughs> this is no problem. He would do that. Every next lesson or two, he'd say, who would like to go off the... To high dive. I'll do it. I did it every time. Like four or five times. Once every four, you know. Anyways. Then it was like maybe, the, you know, let's say fifth time. Maybe we'd be gone a few times. And there was a new instructor there. He didn't you know, fill in, maybe substitute. I don't know. And he said, okay, who wants to jump off the high dive? Well, so by this time, some of them had learned the importance of swimming. I hadn't gotten there yet. <laughs> I just learned the importance of standing on there waiting for the hook. <laughs> And I remember, I went off the high dive, and I'm standing down there, looking up. No hook. I'm praying, Lord, tell them up there, I'm down here. 
No hook. And then it hit me. Well, what if I better, maybe I, maybe I better do something like called push myself up. Never tried that before. So I actually tried that and started to hit up. I started going up. Oh, this thing works. And then all of a sudden there came the hook. Got out. I think a lot of times, folks, we're afraid that God's not going to give us the hook. We're afraid that we're not going to get, Lord, save me. We keep thinking that everything's resting on us. That we can't rest on him. And God will always give you the hook. Every single time. Every time. You have nothing to fear. He's there for you. He loves you like crazy. He's an attentive father. He knows you better than you know. You know you. Every time. But you have to trust him. You have to trust him. Now here's my question for you today. What's God been saying to you about you getting out of the boat? Where do you need to get out of the boat? What's your test of faith today? Has God been speaking something to you? What's he been telling you? What's he been telling you about? Maybe you haven't yet actually given your life to Jesus Christ. And you need to do that. Maybe you haven't been baptized, for example. Or yet. You know, the Bible says to get immersed after you receive Christ. We need to do that. Or maybe you've been baptized. Maybe you received Christ, maybe. But maybe you're just not whacking tight with him. Or maybe he's been saying something I want you to do. And man, there's faith that's required to get out of that boat. And I just want to tell you, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, are good for it. Put your faith in him. You'll pass the test when your faith rests on Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, you're an awesome God. Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you are for us. We aren't alone. Of course we can't walk on water on our own. Done deal. But if you command us to, and if we dare to take you on your, at your word, we can. And Father, I, I, I don't know, Lord. Maybe there are people here today. They've been afraid to do something because they've been relying on their own understanding. Or they can't, things just don't matter. They don't, they don't, it just doesn't make sense. They don't match up as far as their, maybe the data doesn't work. How can five loaves and two fish feed 20,000 people? The data doesn't work. But you still call us to get out of the boat. Friend, as we're praying right now, why don't you, can you in your own heart just say, Lord Jesus, is there something you want me, Lord, to get out of the boat by faith in? And I've been resisting it by fear. Lord, I know it's safe in the boat, but not really. And so, Father, I pray right now, Lord, you'd help us to trust you, to pass the test of faith by putting our faith in you and letting it rest there and only with you. Lord, I pray you'd encourage people, Lord. Maybe they've become overcome. Maybe, maybe they're overwhelmed. They say, I pray, I pray, and things haven't changed. I, I, I've tried this. I'm afraid to go out again. I've been there, done that, don't like it. Father God, I pray, Lord, that they would experience the joy of water walking as they step out of the boat by faith and trusting you. That they would go, wow, look what God did in my life. Look what God did through me. Look how God answered that prayer. I trusted him. Lord, I pray every one of us would get out of the boat in the way that you call us. That we know, we, of course we can't do it, but you, we can when you tell us to and we follow your lead and obey you. Help us to do that. Bless every person, Lord, as we reach out to that, Lord God. Encourage them right now. Help them take that step of faith. And to be excited, help them to keep their eyes on Jesus. And to take their steps of faith and walk to you, Lord. We thank you, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever God's calling you to do, 
go for it. He's there for you. Put your faith in him and he'll, and he'll bless you.